Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a really quick video going over how to create a Power Platform environment. This is actually a follow-up video to the previous video I posted, which was just an environment overview, kind of going over what Power Platform environments are, the different types, um, and a little bit about how they work. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure to go check it out. I will have a link for it in the description. Um, but with that, let's get into the video. So to start off, you're gonna wanna be at make.powerapps.com. Um, and you can see here at the top right, your current environment. Uh, but to actually go in and provision a new environment, you want to click on the settings bar at the top right and click admin center. So depending on your level of privilege in your organization, you might not actually have access to get into the admin center. So just keep that in mind. In addition to this, your organization might have environment creation restricted to only certain type of admins. Um, if that's the case, it'll warn you when you try to create a new environment. Just make sure to reach out to the appropriate staff um, to figure that out. So before you provision an environment, you need to make sure that you have enough database storage in your tenant. Um, and to view this, you wanna to go to the left-hand side and click resources and then capacity. And then right here in the middle is the database. You need to make sure that you have at least a gig of free storage to provision a new environment. You can see in this tenant, I am well over that, but just make sure that you have at least a gigabyte free to provision an environment. And that's the case with or without a Dataverse database. All right, moving on to creating an environment, you wanna click on environments on the left-hand side. And at the top, you can click on new. And we can see we have a pop-up window on the right-hand side where we can start filling out some information. So starting off in the name field, this is what the name of the environment is going to be. Uh, we'll just say test dev. Next is just a region field. Um, and then moving on down to the type, uh, this is where we touched in the last video, the different types of environments. We can see trial production, trial subscription based, as well as sandbox. Uh, for this case, we'll just leave it at sandbox. Moving on down, we have a purpose or kind of a description of the environment. Um, I'm not gonna fill anything out for this one, but if you wanted to put a more detailed description on the specifics of this environment, uh, you could right here. So next up, we have the option to add a Dataverse database to this environment. If you're not sure if you need one right away, you can add one after the fact, um, so this isn't too important. And the last option we have here is to turn on pay as you go with Azure, um, and this allows you to hook up this environment to an active Azure subscription, which allows you to pay for resources in the environment as they're used, including Power Apps, Power Automate Flows, and Dataverse. So very cool addition to the Power Platform there. Not gonna go too far into that in this video, but I can certainly link some documentation in the description below. So now that we've kind of filled all this out, we'd be ready to provision our environment and we just click save. But if we wanted to add a Dataverse database for this environment, like if we go back up here and switch this on to yes, now that save button becomes next, as there's some Dataverse specific questions that it would like us to fill out. So if we go ahead and click on next, first we see a default language setting, as well as the option to provide a custom domain name. And moving on now, we have a currency type. And down here is actually a pretty important part. This is where you'd enable D365 apps. If you don't select yes right away, there's no going back, so you will not be able to utilize any D365 applications within this environment. So if you're unsure, I'd recommend setting that to yes. And below that, we have the option to deploy sample apps and data to the environment. Last up, we can restrict the access to this environment based on a security group. So if we come down here and you have a security group you wanna use, we could select it. Let's say we just want the retail team to have access to this, we would select that and then click done. And once we're all done with this, we just click save. And you can see since I don't have the capacity required, um, I can't actually provision this. But in your case, if you do have the capacity, um, after this, it would show up on this left-hand side with environments. They do take a little bit to provision. I've seen anywhere from five to 10 minutes, uh, so not a crazy amount of time, but just keep that in mind. So thank you so much for watching. That's pretty much it for this video. Again, just a really quick demonstration going over how to provision a Power Platform environment. If you have any questions, please reach out in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.